We know that air resistance accounts for the vast majority of the drag you feel when you're out on your bike. And of all the component parts that contribute towards that drag, your body is by far the biggest. Yeah, so we thought we would try and test out just how big a difference body position can make. How much faster can you go by changing your riding position to be more efficient at cutting through the air? It seems like we should do some science. Shall we do some science? You got the glasses? Have I got the glasses? Drag coefficient. So, how are we going to do this? Well, first of all, we have to say that we don't have the luxury of creating a big enough pool of data to draw any really accurate conclusions from it. What this experiment will do is give us plenty of food for thought. Yeah, we've got this long undulating stretch of road that we think many of you eagle-eyed, avid GCN viewers may actually recognise. It's a sort of GCN test track. Well, almost. Almost. Anyway, so Matt and I are going to do this stretch of road individually at preset wattage. Matt's going to hold 250 watts and I'm going to try and hold 350 watts. And what that will do is that's going to give us two different sets of data for different speeds, a lower speed and a higher speed. And then we can compare the difference as well. Now, obviously, as always, we'll be using our Garmin Vector power meters in order for us to ride at the correct power. And we'll also be recording our heart rates as well. Now, the first run we're going to do is going to be on the tops, not overly aerodynamic, quite a relaxed position. On the completion of the first run, we're going to collect data such as distance covered, average speed that the power has given us, plus our heart rate as well. Yeah, then we will repeat the same stretch of road, but this time we will try and adopt the most, thanks for that, aerodynamic position that we possibly can. The power will be the same, the only difference will be our position. We can then compare the two runs, specifically the average speed, to find out how much faster we can go by being more aerodynamic. What do you reckon? I actually don't know. Nor do I. Tell you what, it feels a bit weird riding at 350 watts on the tops. Not altogether unpleasant. Good luck, Matt. Cheers. This is just a nice, comfortable pace ish depending on how fit you are, but my current state of fitness, not too bad. On the descent, I had to press on a bit more. See how arrow you were just from a distance. I haven't even got my science glasses on. Well, there we go. My word. Should we go crunch through the data? Over a flapjack and a coffee. Sounds good. Let's do it. Right, so we have been through nearly a billion points of data. Nearly. Not quite. Uh, and my time for the first run, which is six kilometers, was 9.07 minutes. For the second run, I was 32 seconds faster. So that's 8.35 minutes. So that means that I went 2.5 kilometers per hour faster on average on my aerodynamic run, which is pretty significant. That certainly is. Well, myself, I was riding 100 watts lower, 250 uh, watts roughly. So my first run, 10 minutes and 19 seconds. My second run was 28 seconds quicker, 9 minutes 51. So just over a kilometer an hour quicker, essentially just for bending my elbows. So that's the, the time savings. What about the effort? So we did put a heart rate monitor on, remember? Matt, your heart rate increased by? Four beats for the aero run. So my first run was 132, second run was 136. But I must admit, it wasn't something that was perceptible to me. I was quite surprised when I looked at it. But again, when you look at the savings and when you look at how much faster I went, I think four beats a minute. It's hardly, it's neither here nor there, to be perfectly honest with you. No, and I was six beats per minute faster on my second run. Uh, but also we have to factor in, because it was a second run, we were probably slightly more warmed up and therefore our heart rates were susceptible to going higher. So it's fair to say that perhaps we were relatively efficient in that aerodynamic position already. However, there is something to take from that. And that is that if speed is really important to you and you therefore want to go faster and adopt a more aerodynamic position, you must 
must train in that position. Not all the time, but from time to time. Now an old pro, not Matt actually, recommended to me that I did 10 minutes of every ride, no matter what the intensity, riding in the drops. And that gets your body accustomed to that more stretched out and aerodynamic position. And I think that's quite a golden rule, actually. Whatever standard you are, however fast you go, there are savings to be made if you get yourself aero. And it's quite easy. Absolutely, yeah. If you want to go faster, then just bend your arms and get more aerodynamic. If you don't want to get faster, though, just enjoy your rides. And sit bolt upright. Yeah. Have a chat. Indeed. Yeah. We've got some more videos on going faster, haven't we? Well, we have, yeah. If you want to see more GCN Does Science videos, just like this one, then you can click up there and get straight through to our playlist where we've got a load of really, really interesting videos for you to check out. We certainly have. But if you want to go faster in an aero position on your road bike, click just down there. Where? Just, just by the, by the, we just by, just down there somewhere. Just down there. Actually, there's a dog bowl down there. <laughs> there is actually a dog bowl. That's quite a nice your bike looks like it's thirsty and it's having a drink. That's just weird. Yeah, it is. If you want to subscribe to GCN <laughs> and after this outro, who wouldn't? Why not just click on us? Please do. No problem at all, mate. You know, it's, um, I've got one on my thumb. Try it again. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, wasps are called Jasper. Did you know that? <laughs> do you know all wasps are called Jasper? What is that? Do you know? Apparently, if you say "Go away, Jasper," "Go, go away, Jasper. Jasper," you can be anybody, can't you? You know, it's um, well, I've bollocks this up, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> Concatenate. Rolling resistance. Velocity. Power equals force times speed. The area of a circle is pi r squared.